first order of business is the minutes of January 3rd and January 10th. Make a motion. Do we have, oh, do we have tonight's too? Is that the other set you have there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and tonight's not a public as well. Sorry. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from January 3rd and January 10th. And you're going to do tonight? Yeah. Okay. And January 17th. Second. I agree. The motion passes. And then we have ex officio reports or and or announcements. Give them a second to finish initially. to leave lieutenant, second lieutenant vacant, and got seconded, and then the proverbial shit hit the fan. Um, they started another vote, another nominations, voted, and everyone started fighting. I didn't, right? Not fighting. Not, well, they could have, I don't know. <laughs> but if you want that bad fight for it, I'll give it to you, I don't care. So here's our issue now. They want us to choose other people, which I highly think that we should not. After the motion to vacate uh, second lieutenant, which was seconded by Heather, it should have stopped. Period. End. Done. So, I don't know if you want, to, want me to motion for this. So, so I'm going to motion that we keep our other... Well, you have to follow the, uh, the, the December, January. <coughs> they, they nominate in December. And they vote in January. We, they, they brought the papers before us. The only one we said was we wouldn't accept Chris Lyles as an officer, but he could be a firefighter yep. if he wanted to. The rest were okay. Yep. Right? If you don't like the outcome of voting, you can't get a second voting. Right. <coughs> so... Motion to keep Roger as chief, buddy as assistant chief, Jeff as captain, Ken Bean lieutenant, Lex. But how do you say his for, as, for as, 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 as secretary and leave second lieutenant as vacant. I'll second your motion. I'll agree with that. Jay, I handed you a letter I had typed up um, just to see what you thought of. Um, I was going to bring it tonight, and I completely forgot, so we just started talking about it. Well, I didn't bring it. <laughs> Neither did I. No, because my bag was too No, full. that's okay. Uh, but it was just to, to a letter to send to the fire and ambulance departments yes. to clarify with them that they're supposed to hold nominations one month. Yes. Bring them to the select board. Yes. And then vote and the I following. And I you sent it. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm sorry. But I wanted to see. <clears throat> Do we want to? Where, 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 where is that rule? Yeah. I can't find it in there. Guidelines. So, um, 2010 one's not in there. No. So what fire has is that they, the annual meeting is when they elect officers, yeah. which is in January. Um, and it really doesn't. I don't. I didn't find anything either that said. But their tradition has been to nominate the prior month and elect mm -hmm. the following. So they do have that elections are in January. Um, ambulance but does have. But they right. shouldn't take effect until the selectmen meet and can approve. Correct. That's Correct. right. They're not supposed to. And with them having a monthly meeting the second Monday of the month, we're always going to, or, or first Monday of the month, we're, we're always going to have a meeting before their next one. Yeah. So that, that shouldn't be a problem. 
Um, uh, yeah. So I was just asking if we wanted, and, and I can send you a copy of that letter, Sarah. Did I send it to you? I don't think I did because I, I was waiting. It. I have it up. Yeah. Um, just basically saying to the to the fire chief and the EMS chief that here's what your bylaws say and here's what we expect you to do. So it's time to stop having nominations slash elections because nothing changed and every it was only one person. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's not especially while they're both. I mean, uh, ambulance just fixed it, just updated their bylaws, and fire's still trying to. So if they don't like it. Make your bylaws say what you want to do then. Don't don't right. be contrary to them, you know? Oh, it was in here. I just found it. But it, it, it not only says um, elections one month and, or nominations one month and elections the next, it also says by paper, ballot. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, even the fire. <coughs> Election of officers, Article, Article 8, Section 2. Election of officers will be held at the December meeting of each year. Nominations of officers must be made at the November meeting by voice or by written notification. Voting will be done by paper ballot at the December meeting, and an absentee ballot email vote has to be requested received at least a week before that meeting. So. And I'm sorry, you said that it should be turned over to the selectmen, the nominations. I was not aware of this um, in all the years. I've never known. We've actually we told you how they've come out afterwards, but never told you what the nominations were. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately this is going to be one of those where the fire department screwed things up and now you're going to pay the penalty. Okay, it's not oh. a big deal. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was the 1995 uh, town warrant, uh, articles 17 and 18, mm -hmm. um, to see if the town will vote to formally recognize the Grafton Volunteer Fire Department. 18 is the Grafton Volunteer Ambulance Squad as a town managed department and furthermore to authorize the board of selectmen to confirm all nominations for members and officers. Oh, I know you, had, you could confirm, but I thought it was after you looked at yeah. it. And there's never been any controversy in the 16, 17 years I've been on. No, the ambulance has been pretty good. Yep. It's that redheaded stepchild next door. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll send them a letter letting them know that um, the motion that Leaf made and, and Jenny seconded and I agreed to as far as their officers go. Okay. And if you guys, I'll, I'll just pop that email to you in, or the letter to you in an email if you guys agree that okay. you can add it to that letter. Add the, like I said, it's just basically saying this is what we expect to happen. And, <laughs> all right. Um, anything else on yours? I haven't had a planning board yet. I haven't had a library yet. I should get. Budget committee had the public hearing on Thursday, and I regret <coughs> to inform you I did not have the bottom line number with me. Can we talk about port toilets? We're not talking about port of uh, portable <laughs> toilets or anything. No. No, we no. didn't talk about that at all. <laughs> um, I did want to say a couple things. Um, a few meetings back, when Vanessa was here taking minutes, um, there was a question about whether or not we could tell someone they couldn't speak if they refused to sign in or let us know who they were. Um, RSA 91A22. Um, minutes of all such meetings, including non-public sessions, shall include the names of members, persons appearing before the public bodies, and a brief description of subject matter discussed. So. If you're going to talk, that would be appearing before us. So just wanted to clarify that. Also, on the never-ending Lakota Trust case and Sharon oh, Clark yes. questions, per the attorney's recommendation, 91A32E says consideration of pending litigation until settled is not privy to right to know law. You may not ask us, and we will not tell you anything more about them. Uh, 91A32L uh, is consideration of legal advice. So, we've already said too much, we won't say any more, so don't uh, ask. Thank do you. Do you want to clarify at the bottom why she's still technically named? Do you have it? I can. So, Sharon Clark's name is still on the court paperwork because that's how it was filed. She and her estate are not, have never been made party to the lawsuit because we did not serve her. 
neither she nor her next of kin will be liable for anything going on with the case. Okay? I think that would be good. Yep. Thank you. And with that, you guys good? Anything else? Public comment. Were you suggesting that there wasn't a written ballot? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Were you suggesting that there wasn't a written ballot? For what? For the election of the fire department. The election that never happened? <laughs> I um, their bylaws do not say it has to be. The ambulance does, and I don't know. I, I would imagine not. I wasn't there, though. I don't know. No, but you, were you suggesting that there wasn't a written ballot election? I'm suggesting that, yes, probably that possibly was, was the case because what the minute said was that all former officers were nominated to continue in their same positions. So that's my assumption. I don't know. Kathy's, Kathy and David are right behind you, though, and they were there. For which one? Ours? Yeah, ambulance. In our case, it was, it was the exact same crew. Nothing's changed. So we all vote in favor of keeping that's, the same thing. Yeah. That's what I assume. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it always goes. <laughs> and in December, I had said, you know, we already said last month that we had the same ones. And this is actually what we're chatting about now, so sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, so, yeah. I'm talking about the fire We'll department. make it more efficient next year. Did I, which one? The last the meeting or the meeting before? The January one. But did I? There was the one that you recorded? Yes. Yes, there was a, well, there was a paper ballot. Yeah, okay. All right. It didn't count. Okay. Yeah, we just rejected that outright. Yes, Ryan. Ryan Hill, does the select board, it seems like the select board cares about written procedures, documentation, bylaws, laws, etc. I still don't understand then how the select board does not seem to care about the junkyard ordinance and the fact that those words weren't um, followed, but yet there's still a lawsuit. So just want to point out what I think is an obvious contradiction. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh Airport. yeah, <laughs> an obvious contradiction. Lakota Trust, otherwise known as 350 Dean, was an absolute crap storm for the better part of 10 years and anybody that's lived in town knows it. It was piled high. Nothing about that warranted intervention by the town until now. And I do find that very selective. Thank you. you First order business is sander replacement. Did Jeff talk to both of you about the? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So he brought a quote, $29,700. Is it worth it? So there's a chain that he's replaced two or maybe three times now for he, the highway department. The highway department. Um, right. For about ten thousand dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. um, seems to last about a year. For whatever, I mean, Jeff told me he feels that this is a solution, a long-term solution. Well, this would be a better solution than the chain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Obviously, budgets have been turned in, the hearing's done. Um, I suggested possibly we could use ARPA money for it. You know, $30,000 seems to be what we like to give departments to take care of stuff that do you has have, to get done. Do you have that one? Yeah. Yeah. And so it would be no uh, impact to the taxpayers. Correct. I'm kind of leaning on Leaf a little here because I think he knows the mechanics of it a little better. Maybe not the new, but definitely the me. <laughs> no, yeah, Jeffrey explained it. Well, the way that sander on that truck is built, it's a pain in the ass to change a chain on a sander, throw a hole that big. That's what you get to work with. Now, I don't know about. Jeffrey's about the same size. Hold that big, and <laughs> you gotta get a chain in with that. So in a long one, if you're replacing that every year, the time and labor, this will save the town money. 
especially in the middle of a snowstorm when you lose a truck because mm -hmm. you can't sand. There's only one, maybe one way to fix that chain and probably that sander being empty. And if you've ever shoveled out one of those <coughs> sander bodies by hand, <laughs> it fucking sucks. Are you on? Uh, no, suggestion you want to show out a sander body? No, I just oh, wanted okay. to say the way the weather has changed and we're having more rain and ice than we are snow and it really needs to yeah. work. So if they go out and sand, fix it, they sand, and the next run it breaks again, it's going to get expensive. So this right here. Yeah, well you figure $10,000 10, a year plus time and labor. Right, yeah. right. It's already expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if this lasts for three years, we're even. We're actually we're ahead because we're ahead labor because we didn't have to fix it three times. Right. It, saves, it gets the road agent time to be out on the roads, working on the roads and in the shop fixing the equipment. So I think if we had the funds available, we should do it ASAP. Is that a motion? Yes. Second. From ARPA money. Thank you. Information regarding the Ambulance USDA grant. Oh, so <laughs> you're getting your oh, okay. So I'm it's like this isn't when you leave, this is when you get up and talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what's he doing, running out on him? Oh, scare him away. <laughs> oh, while we wait for that, real quick. Um, we had months months back, we got the ambulance write-off policy, but it said draft across it. Can we um, re-adopt it? We got a signed, clean copy. All it is is just, uh, the auditors asked for a, a written policy for doing the insurance write-offs. Mm -hmm. So that's all it is. It's, yep. Just says that uh, if they're, what, 24 months old, once a year, bring them to us and, and we'll sign them off. this USDA grant, do you want to? I can, I don't know if you have anything to find. No, okay. not at all, no, I. <laughs> so ultimately for the USDA grant, we had to do an information um, meeting, the select board. Um, the ambulance department, with the town of Grafton is going for a USDA rural development grant um, for 32% of the total cost of the ambulance, which is around $263,000. I don't know if you guys have it. 267 and some change. Yeah, I don't know if you have the exact number in front. Um, so my contact in Concord said that we can apply for the 32%. Um, the documentation says it's up to 50. However, she said, let's actually do the 32%, which would be $92,070. Um, and we applied for the state funds because there's two different funds you can go to. So the one in December closes the state funds and then the one in April for the federal funds. Um, the federal funds are a little bit more competitive. Um, this time around, Andrea said that there wasn't very many applicants from the state. So we went ahead to apply that. Um, and again, this is grant money, so this will bring the total cost down. Um, our ultimate goal is not to have any increase in taxpayers' no, um, taxes to get this ambulance. Between with our calling account and yeah, the grant. And then also ARPA funds yeah. when that's earmarked to two, the ambulance. 263059. Two okay. I, I know it was two, <laughs> two something. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't have the numbers in front of me. So, any questions? Um, we do have a Facebook page, and since this is actually now out in the public, I will mention that, and the 
you know, the agreement that we have. Our ambulance is coming from Maine, from Autotronics. It's a Braun. It'll be on a 2023 chassis. Um, I talked to Kyle Daigle, who is our sales representative, and he says it's right on mark to be completed in um, January, the beginning of next year, 2024. Any questions from the board? Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, that? I have the tone on there, but we don't have that done, right? We haven't gotten it back from the DRA. One thing I will mention, because it came up at the budget hearing, um, we could, if we wanted to, recommend for or against the petition warrant articles. Mm -hmm. um, the budget committee had to on the library one because it's a money. One, and they did, they did recommend against it. So I'm just opening that up. If you if you want to make a recommendation for or against that one or any of them, we do oh. have we do have the right thanks to Jeremy Olson's lawsuit he lost that I don't think he should have. game can go on anybody's property. Right. They don't need a search warrant. Uh, right. I've never FDF. seen uh, in recent years, in the last at least 10 years, when the assessor wants to come to your property to check the taxation, they they let you know ahead of time. They sure. send you a letter. Sure. So, I mean, that's pretty redundant. And I don't agree with the library in any way, so. And we do have a building notification for building zone. If you build a shed. I vote against. Not in favor. Did you, did you want to, us to put a recommendation on? Or just leave it be and let the budget? Do you want to recommended or not recommended? See, like these all say the selectmen recommend this article, so it would be nice and bold at the bottom of it, the selectmen do not, because this one's going to say the support of, or the budget committee does not recommend. We have it for the selectmen did not recommend. Yes. Sure, why not? On article 19? If, if we don't recommend it, we don't, yeah, for sure. The other two leave be? Or? I don't think they're going to pass anyway. No. But. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Which is the, the library one, in case numbering gets skewed somehow. <clears throat> okay. For its building notification, we goofed up last time we talked about it, because we talked about sending him a letter, but we did not formally um, reject his request for... Appeal. Appeal. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm new to this, so you got to fill me in a little bit. Oh, we didn't put it back in the folder. Awesome. Um, so this is the guy in Kinsman. Yeah, he built the shed. Yeah. Then he yeah, it on built the, the house over the shed or yeah, around yeah. the shed. <coughs> and uh, no, 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 when it was a shed, he brought his sick wife there. Nice husband. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so now he has a house without a septic or a well, right? Yeah. So pray tell, what do they do for water and septic? Don't know what they do for water. Um, as far as septic goes, they... they hmm? Outhouse. Well, they have the outhouse that they also don't have a query permit for. Um, and they wanted to put in, what did he say? A, a, they wanted gray water to just discharge out the house and they wanted a holding tank yeah. for black water or for, you know, so solids. State so has the law. Right, which is what we told him. So, uh, he can't do that. Right. Yeah, so we turned it down and then he continued to build. So, did you send him a cease and desist? That's what we need to do because he appealed. Okay. He asked for us to, to reconsider. 
So we need to, we, we talked about it last time. We talked about sending them a letter telling them no, but we did not formally make a motion, second it, have a vote, and say we refuse his repeal. We, we're not reconsidering. Okay. So make a motion just like that. Second. <laughs> because um, our septic system failed. We had to put in a whole yes, new one. Right. Which cost fourteen thousand dollars. So yeah. uh, and the design had to be approved uh, and uh, the yes. state had to give you permission yes. exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And everything had to be dug out and taken away. So, you know. I think we're down to correspondence. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, this is an email. The Community Development Finance Authority is accepting applications for its programs for the 2023 calendar year. Block grants for housing and public facilities, economic development, micro enterprises, emergency. No more definition on that. Uh, planning and capacity building programs, a clean energy fund. Small business energy audits, community facilities energy assessment program, recovery housing program, and a pre-development loan program. And it's all just links to things, so the email is kind of useless other than a lot of links. Um, this is an email from Mary Gazrowski letting us know that Fogel has renewed their insurance for the year, and Grafton is still listed, listed as an additional insured, so when their events come up this year, we don't need to bother them again about insurance. <coughs> Excuse me. This is an email from Representative John Sellers. Hello, Select Board. While at the meeting on 1220, I mentioned that the county may have extra ARPA funds that Grafton could apply for. I followed up with Julie Libby, the county administrator, and she explained to me that there hasn't been any formal plan to re release the five plus million dollars. She did say the county has a few projects they may need to do. Asked, like all towns, there's always a project that's in need. I understand this money must be used by 2024. At this time, I'd suggest contacting or writing to the county administrator and the three commissioners and asking them about this money and if, when, and how Grafton could apply for some to be used for an ARPA expense that was pushed off because of COVID. Hope this helps. Good idea. And the last is a letter from the New Hampshire Electric Co-op regarding tree re-clearing notice for the New Hampshire Electric Co-op utility right away, yada, yada, yada. They're trimming trees as per the usual. Uh, at the bottom, it does mention, though, you may be receiving this notice because the NHEC broadband is coming to your service area. NHEC is committed to ensuring our members have access to high-speed internet and is working with contractors to install fiber optic networks throughout the underserved areas of New Hampshire. Before these fiber optics can be installed, tree re-clearing and mowing must be completed to make room for additional poles and wires. If you have any questions, there's contact information. Do they know something we don't know? I doubt it. <laughs> no. Public comment number two. Yes, Leeway. I sent you guys a correspondence. Did you receive it last yes. week? Yes. Sarah will respond via email. Yes. But you're not going to read it here. Oh, no, it's not even in the folder. I'm sorry. No. Yes, Maureen. Um, that warrant article about not trespassing on someone's property. The planning board is supposed to, when a subdivision comes up, is supposed to go and view the property and the um, stakes in the ground for where the division is going to happen, all of that. They would have to notify the property owner. Yeah, they they normally do notify, but yeah. Just saying, that's another thing. They are right here on someone's property for. All right. Last comments from the selectman. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your hands come up. Um. All right. Well, first of all, is uh, their interpretation of the word appearance. According to 91A, is that legal advice? Or is that your own interpretation of the RSA? What part of we're not going to talk about this anymore did not seem clear. <laughs> well, it's just the 
I'm saying, is that legal advice or your interpretation on that? The word appearance. Mm -hmm. Use that in context, because I'm not seeing that on this piece of paper I read from. You just, you just read it. Appearing? You said if someone appears in front of the select board, they have to... Uh, oh, oh, oh! Right, thank you. Thank you. I thought you were still on the Sharon Clark thing. No. I don't know where that piece of paper went. Well, I'm, I'm not really going for like a back and forth on that. Just is that is that a legal opinion or your? That was I was reading an RSA. Just reading. I was RSA. reading an RSA. Okay. Okay. Yep. Just Thank you. Yep. That. Um, and I have so you're confirming that Sharon Clark is still on the lawsuit. Um, this is not a question. Um, and I received confirmation from the court that she Jesus. is still on the lawsuit, and this runs uh, directly contradictory to what you said in the past. Yes, we misspoke because it was stated in court. You were there. You recorded it. Mm -hmm. Now we're done. The topic is closed. Do you have something else? That was, wasn't a question. Was okay. Comment. Oh, this meeting is not published. If you're recording our 91, this is not, uh, the meeting's the place is not written on the word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. They uh, are all posted on the Board of Selectmen page. All meetings are held at the town hall. It is stated the first and third Tuesday. And if you think we're doing something wrong, by all means, let me know what's missing I'm, via email. I'm and I will, when I'm sitting in front of my computer, I will fix it. I'm you yes, Ryan. Um, so, uh, Jenny, uh, I haven't met you yet, but I'm Ryan Health. Um, you said that Avatar has to notice you first. Yes, they do. Well, they didn't when they came on our property um, when we first bought it. So. Uh, there seems to be... A well, probably, this is probably what happened. I don't know how you bought it, but you pro they probably sent the letter to the previous one. I don't know. There seems to be a disconnect there. Um, it would be really good then since you guys hire Avatar to um, assess the property values, which I believe is the job. Yes, we do. Yeah. I think I would reiterate that they need to do that because when I talked to them after they came on our property with it being posted no trespassing, they said, we have the right to do it. We can come on. Mm -hmm. So there's a disconnect. So I would urge you guys to make that clear if that's what you think should be happening because it didn't happen in at least one situation, ours, and I've heard of other people that that's not true. So I would urge you guys to have a can come on your property. I, I, I believe they when they can't they, enter your house without yeah. your permission. Yeah, and I, I believe when they're going around the town in the spring, there's usually just an announcement out that they're they're out and about. It's not they specific. They don't tell you where they're going. And they usually have a white car with a green sign on the oh, side that says DOT or property. something. Yeah, on the side. they don't have to. So you guys are hiring people, an entity that can just come on our property even if we don't want them there. So any assessor would be have that right. Any assessor, whether it be us or somebody else, we can. And technically, your land is not posted properly. So hold on. You guys are technically <laughs> hiring someone to come and trespass on our property. Is that what you're saying? Yes, David. Well, so it's going to be tight to this. So, like, if we go to larger cities, they'll actually have an outright department that's an assessor, and they'll. They, it's no different. Um, I will say, in line with kind of actually balancing all sides here, when I first bought my property here, I didn't receive a letter, and I think it's a timing thing because the following year that I had my the, the property was listed under my name in 2017, I did actually start getting the, the avatar letters. So it, it may just be a timing thing on their part. Thank you. Uh, so uh, sorry, I wasn't finished yet. Oh. Okay, may I continue? You seem to make an accusation that my our property wasn't posted correctly. Um, it's clearly marked if someone drives down our yeah. driveway that it's posted no property. So I just want to set the record straight there. You're right. If you come in off the back and you're a hunter, uh, we may not have legal protections there. But if you're
coming down our driveway. It's posted clearly no trespassing, so. Yeah, but they, they have right to come onto your property. And down your driveway and look at your property. Is that the select board's position that Avatar is allowed it's, to come and trespass on my property? Uh, it, it's, just like, it's just like a Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> no, no, no. no, it's not. They come That's down right. to your door. To, to Would you like me to send you guys an email so it's not like I'm trying to get you no. on something? Like, is it? Is this a question that should be submitted via email? No, I, I is understand something you should what you take it up uh, with the avatar. Yeah, take it up. I up. did. Then what they say is what they do. What did they we're, say? We're in contract with them. <laughs> what so did, they, what did they tell them? You're hiring a company that's violating my rights. So that's a problem. That's my comment. Um, so I wonder what's changed with all of a sudden this is a lawsuit with the Sharon A. Clark docket number, blah, blah, blah. It just seemed like it was a lawsuit now. The last two of the three select board meetings, it done. was not a done. lawsuit. Gary. Wait, what do you mean I'm done? You're done. Just, we're not talking about We're not talking Sharon about it anymore. anymore. Yes, Gary. Just clarify <laughs> what the avatar uh, access to property is. Do they just have to send a letter? Or are they supposed to send a letter to receive permission? I don't know. There's probably a law that says. I don't know. I don't know. So we don't know that. I can't say, at least with the letters I've received, the, the only request that they're actually giving you when they do the thing is this request to uh, organize an appointment for them to view the inside of your property. That I've done, yes. Okay, that's the only thing I've gotten past that. <coughs> so if I this isn't, that, no, make it this a Sharon thing ain't gonna go away. No, it's not. It so it's not. Read the goddamn thing. It doesn't. Read what All he said. All it does is, is it, they don't have the ability to enter into your home. Just stop him from talking. talking. Sorry. Oh, no. You can keep talking from yourself. Well, because technically we don't like to let you guys talk at all. When, when do we, when, when does, when, when is Avatar showing up? They don't give an exact date. They say that, they say winter, springtime. Winter, springtime. So they sent out letters saying that they're doing their... They have 20% pickle. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they will be around um, during the winter, springtime frame. Well, I think that we should send Avatar a letter and tell him, them that we have some disgruntled residents and they would like a clarification of when uh, they're allowed, if at all, to go on the resident's property. You've got to put it to rest. It takes up more time than it's worth. Amen. Agreed. I mean, I don't care if they come on my property. I don't have anything to hide. Come ahead. but. Some people just don't want yeah. people, anybody walking around their property. Besides, I got guns and dogs. I do too. That's why I don't care what Avatar does, thinks they can or can't do. If I don't want them there, they're not coming on. I don't know why this has to be a selectman problem. You hired them. <laughs> I did not personally hire them. No. The town of Grafton hired them. You represent the town of Grafton. Yes. Right. And we have to have somebody go around and assess because can you imagine us going to your house and assessing your property? I think that's part of select board's responsibility is to assess. If you choose to hire we, a contract that we out, do, cool. We do pay Don't. attention to the assessments, but I could go over to your house and say, oh hell, he's got a fireplace, he's got a swimming pool, no, he did blah, 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 you know? After and that. his house is worth five million. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's your right. opinion. You know, because that's that my been opinion. You trained to assess property. So, uh, and that is what used to be, isn't that how Right, used we to used to go around house? all the time and yes, do the assessing and get chased by dogs and turkeys and people and so <laughs> on and so forth. But uh, people before us decided to hire an assessment firm. And that's what all towns do. So maybe we're sheep and we follow, but at least uh, we've got somebody that knows what they're doing. Cool. So. But they're on my property without my permission. Like, well, if they're on, that's between you and them. If, if they were on your property without your permission, chase them off. Yep. <laughs> Try it. They didn't leave. Paul Mitchell? 
I have no idea. Is it you representatives that you're Paul, hiring? I don't Paul know, Mitchell. like that simple. I Paul Mitchell. Do you call, call, he said call, call Mitchell. Mitchell. Oh, call he Mitchell. was asking call Mitchell. Oh, call yeah. the police is basically what he's saying. Call Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. pay it. So That's his job. So I mean, the board is directing Mitchell to chase them off my property. No. Yeah. You are. Oh, You're okay. the one that's going to call him, not us. Okay. What is wrong um, with you? Jesus. <laughs> You're telling me to chase them off my property. Like, all right. Go out and say, please leave my property. Final comments from the selection. I don't have any more. <laughs> you might not like them. I don't.